Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Carmiel Marceline and I'm so happy that you're here. If you are new, welcome. Welcome to the family, thanks for joining. And I love talking about my hobbies, plants being one of them. In this series, From Pixels to Petals, I talk about video game characters and items and I discover what their real life doppelgangers are. Interesting, right? And I did one a couple weeks ago for Zelda. If you haven't watched it, I'll link it up there for you to peruse. And in today's video, we are talking about none other than Pokemon. I'm not talking about Snorlax, but I am discussing six grass Pokemon and what they were inspired by. Woo! How exciting. So grab a snack, sit back and relax because we are about to catch, I mean plant, them all. Who's that Pokemon? Ivysaur, Pokemon number two. You may be familiar with Bulbasaur, but sorry to disappoint you, we're not talking about it. We're talking about its evolved form, Ivysaur. If you look at the Pokedex, Sunlight exposure increases its strength and it also grows the bud on its back. It's also three feet tall and weighs about 29 pounds. That's the size of my Whippet dog, Otis. Given that Ivysaur is a poison Pokemon, you might wanna be careful when approaching it. Luckily, you don't gotta be careful when you're approaching its real life doppelganger, a Bromeliad. Bromeliads are non-toxic, so you as a human and pets are safe. Bromeliads have striking sword-like leaves and a vibrant bright bloom, which is actually a bract surrounding a flower. These, unfortunately, only bloom once in their lifespan, so you better enjoy it while it lasts. How do you exactly take care of a bromeliad? Well, if we look at my adorable little plant card here, you can see that it needs well-draining soil because it grows on top of logs, leaves, and other plants, you wanna make sure that it gets bright indirect sunlight because it actually grows underneath the tree canopy. And lastly, you wanna water it when the soil is fully dry. You don't wanna be letting it sit in wet soil, do you? Who's that Pokemon? Oddish, Pokemon number 43. An equally peculiar and adorable Pokemon. Let's look at the Pokedex. Oddish love to stay in the cold underground to avoid the sun, and they grow with exposure to moonlight. Adorable. They're about one foot tall and weigh about 12 pounds. That's the equivalent to a mini dachshund. Oddish and its real life doppelganger, a compacta dracaena, are poisonous, so be careful. This plant has stiff, dark green leaves that fan out to form rosettes around canes. And just be careful of your furry friends taking a little nibble from this plant because it does contain a toxic chemical compound. Let's get into plant care. If we look at the plant card, it needs well-draining soil, bright indirect sunlight, and you need to water it when the top few inches of the soil are dry. Be careful about waiting too long because if it's too dry, the leaves will turn brown. Who's that Pokemon? Vile Plume. Pokemon number 45. While we talked about Oddish, we're gonna skip ahead and talk about its final evolved form, Vile Plume. Disclaimer, things are gonna get a little gloomy. <laughs> if we look at the Pokedex, we can see that the larger its petals, the more toxic pollen it has. It is about four feet tall, ginormous, that's almost my height, and weighs about 41 pounds. That is the equivalent of four bowling balls. At first glance, a vile plume may look like a mushroom, but no, it's a flower. And its real life doppelganger is a rafflesia, a corpse lily. This is a parasitic plant, which means it has no roots, it has no stems and no leaves, just five petals that are this bright orange color with little bits of speckles that look like warts. Lovely right? You can find it naturally in Indonesia and it weighs about 15 pounds, which is similar to your coffee table. And its blooms can reach a diameter of three feet. 
Ever wonder why a vial plume's name is so vile? Because the real life version of this plant, a reflesia, emits a terrible stench, one that smells just like rotten meat whenever it blooms. Talk about a hidden ability, not one that I'd wanna have. It's close to going extinct due to habitat loss and poaching, but really, could you even tolerate that smell? <laughs> and on that note, if you are liking this video so far, hit that like button. It would help me very much and the YouTube algorithm. If you are intrigued by this video and you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified every single time I post, ring that bell. And with that, let's get back into these Pokemon. I can't promise it's gonna get any better. Who's that Pokemon? Victor Bell. Pokemon 71. Victor Bell is the final evolved form of a Bell Sprout. And if we look at the Pokedex, it's huge. It's five feet tall and weighs about 34 pounds, which is the equivalent of three gallons of paint. Woof, literal woof. It lures its prey with a sweet aroma of honey and it swallows its prey whole, oftentimes digesting it in a day. If I were you, I'd stay clear of not only this Pokemon, but also its real life doppelganger, a tropical pitcher plant. There are about more than a hundred different species of this plant. They often grow in swampy areas and they can grow up to the size of a football field. They have these hanging vase shaped cups with a slippery outer lip to lure prey with a sweet nectar smell. These plants are carnivorous, which means they eat flesh. Large ones can eat lizards, frogs, and rodents. I hope you didn't faint there. Similar to Vileplume's Reflesia, a tropical pitcher plant is endangered due to habitat loss, poaching, and drought because it lives in swampy areas. As a result, we're not going to be talking about its care routine. Who's that Pokemon? Executor. Pokemon 103. The evolved form of an Execute. If we look at the Pokedex, we can see that Executors got three heads, and they don't like listening to one another, but when they do, and they've got some triplet telepathy, they create this amazing psychic power. They are also ginormous. They are six feet and weigh about 265 pounds. For reference, that's the same weight of a giant panda. While I know the newer versions, there's an Aeolian executor. We're talking about the OG one, the stumpy, the frumpy, you know which one I'm talking about. The real life doppelganger of this is a dragon tree, also known as a Dracaena. This Dracaena has sword-like leaves that are green that also have a red edge. You can grow them indoors and outdoors, but be careful because they are toxic. Here's how you can grow and take care of one. If we look at the plant card, it needs well-draining soil, bright indirect sunlight because direct light will burn its leaves. And lastly, you wanna water it when the top 50 to 75% of the soil is completely dry because it is a drought resistant plant. Who's that Pokemon? Tangela, Pokemon 114. This Medusa inspired Pokemon is hidden beneath a tangle of vines. And if we look at the Pokedex, we can see that it regenerates. Every single time a vine is cut off, it just grows on back. This Pokemon is also three feet tall and weighs 77 pounds. That is the equivalent of a male German Shepherd. While I wasn't able to find an exact color match for Tangela, I was able to find a close doppelganger, and that is a red dragon flower. This flower has succulent-like stems that grow upright, but as time goes on and it grows heavier, they go downward. It also has reddish flowers at the base of the plant, and similar to the Reflesia, this red dragon flower emits a terrible stench, one of rotten meat, in order to attract flies to pollinate it. Ew. Ew. If that doesn't deter you from getting one, I don't know what will. So let's get into plant care. If we look at the plant card, it needs well-draining soil, 
chunky, porous, you know the drill. Bright indirect light or partial shade because direct sunlight will scale the stems. And lastly, you wanna water it when the top 50% of the soil is dry. There you have it. Those are six grass Pokemon and their doppelgangers in real life. I hope you leveled up your plant knowledge. I know I sure did. I learned a lot about carnivorous plants. And one of the biggest things I took away today is to not battle them. You better run away. If you have ideas of video games or anime franchises that you'd like for me to cover on Pixels to Petals, let me know down below. And with that, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.